Welcome back to the lesson plan. I am Nikki Mill, and this is the lesson plan. Before we get started, I'm going to introduce our new guest. He is an attorney, a mentor, a speaker, a published author, an activist, a father, a husband, a hip hop lover, a producer in his own right, an amazing stand up individual, which I am fortunate to call an ally and friend. Let's welcome to the lesson plan, Francois Restrepo. Rolling the R's. Hello, hello, my friend. How are you? Good to see you. Thank Good to see you. Me. So before we get the lesson plan started, we start off with affirmation. So it's a call and response. So we could just affirm ourselves and set the grounds of, you know, the positive energy here. Go ahead. So here we go. I am intelligent. I am intelligent. I am seen. I am seen. I am kindness. I am kindness. I am brave. I am brave. I am hip hop. I am hip hop. I am a student of life. I'm a student of life. And I am a teacher. And I am a teacher. And yes, you are. So let's get started with our teaching point. Our teaching point is just to kind of just bring us into who you are, your life. But we're going to start from back and going forward. Um, take us to your childhood and who were your mentors and where was that childhood taking place before you arrived in New York? All right. Uh, I'm Colombian. Uh, I was born in Colombia. I was born in Bogota, Colombia. I'm an 81 baby. 81. So I don't get here until like around 85, 86 years. 86. Okay. And that's when I fell in love with the Mets. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, and then I've been in Corona Queens my whole life. At Corona Queens. And that's it for me. Like, you know, Corona Queens is very special to me, first and foremost. Mm -hmm. The 11368. Like St. Hughes lived mm -hmm. in Corona. Louis Armstrong, Louis Armstrong lived in Corona. Cool G Rap is from cool Corona. Cool G Rap. And the Beat Nuts are from Corona. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So it's and then very... Queens itself is just a melting pot. The you galaxy. Know? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of talent um, that have come, that has lived there, that has come out of there. Um, so that's where it comes out of. Like, I, we leave Colombia. And for those that don't know, you know, like Colombia's. Was it intentional to come to New York or was your family in? Yeah, it was intentional oh, okay. because a lot of Colombians, especially from that part of Bogota, were coming here specifically to okay. Queens. And there's, mm -hmm. as you know, like there's just and they established you know, like, themselves in Queens. a whole okay. community of Colombians. So that was like the place to go. And Colombia had been, you know, characterized um, really as a country that was really torn mm -hmm. by civil war for yes. about 50 years or so and even mm -hmm. more and there's still armed conflict there um but the 80s specifically were very intense and we just needed citizen security, security and <laughs> right we okay. needed to flee so and take us home now we're in corona queens we need so now you're in corona we, li we lived on like 111th street and and we, i've lived all around corona mm -hmm. uh in this like small radius i've just moved from block to block. And it was pretty dope growing up because you would see a lot of those same kids that you went mm -hmm. to elementary school with later on in junior high right. and high school. So you knew a lot of kids from the neighborhood mm -hmm. as you grew up. And, you know, at the time, what's popping in schools for us as kids? And I have an older sister, mm -hmm. so I'm one of three. So that's one of your first mentors into whatever you're about to discuss now. <laughs> yeah, because she would she would bring home books that had um a Henry Chiffon book. Right. You know, around that time or some something with uh an element culture. of hip hop culture right. in it. Or she would come home and she's the one that like discovered video music box. Mm -hmm. And I think you know, that was our, our, our gateway to just exposing ex exactly exposing us to hip-hop and all the elements of hip-hop um so you have your sister at home teaching you about hip-hop or you're learning about hip-hop who are your role models at home then there's dad there's mom and there's my older sister and in that household there was a lot of music being played all the time mm -hmm. so constant music and all kinds of music like my mom would play Carlos Santana stuff on like vinyl. Right. So Samba Pati, like that mm -hmm. was played on vinyl for me, along with Ana Gabriel and Camilo Sesto and all that other stuff and a lot of cumbia and then OG salsa from Infania all the way to down. the present. But all of that stuff was 
presented. Incorporated at home, right. And presented in vinyl, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and my sister has, like, the first Madonna album on, like, vinyl. She still has that. Um, So all of that was presented on vinyl. Mm-hmm. But it was, you know, Thundercats and different strokes right, and right. all of that. Exactly. Those are mm-hmm. the, the different things the that help life. mold us, right? So now you're stepping outside. You're stepping out of the doors of home, right? The doorway of home. What is it starting to look like to you? How are you forming yourself as a student in New York, a person in New York, oh, yeah. a growing person in New York? And that's the thing. Like you could, we were outside, mm-hmm. right? At we a, were absolutely outside. At a young age. <laughs> Where you're outside. We were playing. And you're playing all kinds of games. Mm-hmm. You know, pick the plan, manhunt. This you're the interacting. Other. You're, you're building. You're interacting. Right? You're, you're building. You're communicating. Life skills begin um, there. I think the crucial moment was high school. High school. That's the crucial moment. You want to shout out the high school? Yeah, John Brown High School yeah, up go. in Queens. John Brown high you know, a um, lot, of, lot of heads walked. Through, through and out those doors of mm-hmm. John Bond High School. But that's where it got crucial because, you know, you are going to high school, mid-90s, mm-hmm. in New York City. Exactly. Um, there's a lot happening with music. There's a lot happening in the world around that time, too. There's a mm-hmm. lot happening in New York City. This is right. post-David Dinkins. Mm-hmm. Somebody else comes into place. Right. Right. And New York starts to Evolve be different. Evolve and change. Evolve and, and change. And it's almost hard to to paint the picture of what New York City was like in the 90s. It's almost like if you had to be there, you had to be there unless you're watching something and you're looking at the imagery. But it was just such a, a, a feeling of so much going on in terms of music, in terms of clothing, in terms of different influences around you. Um, so take us a little further. Now you're starting to develop and decide who you want to become. Correct. And that's shaped by... You know, I, I think you and I, you and I are only a few years apart. But mm-hmm. those those few years apart come with a lot of influence because... In between. In between. So it's really y'all that we are... What music is cool? That's mm-hmm. y'all. What's being worn? Mm-hmm. Right? What low game you had? Right, that all right, came from right. folks who were a bit older than, mm-hmm. than, than me. Um. High school too. Then all those questions about like yo, what you, what you doing when you get out of here? Mm-hmm. That starts too. It's, yeah, because you know, now you're almost out the door, so you have to make a choice. What are you gonna do? You you're either gonna continue correct. your education, or what is what are you gonna do? Because your parents are not gonna let you sit at home and just correct play and, video games. And no one no one in my family had finished at, at that point. No one had finished high school, um, even gone into college for that matter. So. Mm-hmm. FAFSA, guidance counselors, what school to pick, right? what major, all of that, maneuvering that whole system, that was... So what made you, like, what was that key point that you decided, okay, or was it from the very beginning that you made a choice that I want to go into and explain what you do? <laughs> right. Um, I definitely knew that I, I wanted to be in public service. Okay. I didn't... I didn't, I didn't contextualize it in that way people. but i wanted to help folks from my community or from different back mm-hmm. you know from from same backgrounds um but i i didn't know what that looked like right. i didn't know how to contextualize it mm-hmm. yet um and i had not taken high school that seriously mm-hmm. as well mm-hmm. right and that's critical because then i'm like i know i think i want to do something in the law and i don't know what so because I connected John Jay with law enforcement and mm-hmm, the law, mm-hmm. I figured that was the best place for me to go. Right. And that's where I went. And it was there, really, where I realized how much I didn't know, how much I needed to learn, how much more I needed to study. Um, and that's where I made connections that I still have in this Okay, life. so, so who, who was guiding you there? What resources were available to you? Were, were you funding your own education? Were there programs that were helping? Right. Because these things are very important to, to other students that are looking at this and watching and you identifying with, you know, who we are. You look like me. Okay, so what are these different tools that, we, that are available to us that we can utilize in order to push our dream, right, or our vision forward? So that's, that's key because... I get in there and two things. I didn't know where to put a period. Mm-hmm. 
on paper, like if you told me where a period goes in a sentence, I couldn't answer that for you. I, I just could not. Mm -hmm. Entering mm -hmm. college, right? Here I am college. I don't know the difference between and that, that and a semicolon. I can't tell you the difference, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember the first paper I, I got in my, in my English class. And it had a big, fat, red, red letter D, mm -hmm. you know? And, and scribbles, I'm sure, scribbles, all, it was just all over awful. it. Red it pen, was awful. That's when it was red awful. pen was a thing. Um, so I started going to tutoring to work on my writing. And I put in work, and I put in mad work to work mm -hmm. on my writing. I was there on the weekends as well. And I worked all my way up, all the way up, all the way up to like a BB plus in that class coming mm -hmm. from the end. Then as time went on, as life would have it, I ended up becoming a writing tutor mm -hmm. there as well. But before all of that, I was a Sikh student, mm -hmm. which I know in, in in some Sunni schools here, like the equivalent of that would be like an EHOP student age, mm -hmm. right? Um, there, there's a different available resources and tools right. and funding in order to, to for you to be able to continue your education. Correct. So I didn't, I you know, my parents, working class, mm -hmm. they didn't have the wherewithal to... Right. The same situation here. Then you me know, we had to, to, we had to seek. Seek? <laughs> right. Exactly. We had to seek other resources and funding in order to pay for our education. My mother and my parents couldn't pay for my education, so we had to have, what was it, um, play FASA? Um, the FASA, yeah. And Pell Grants and all these different programs that support your education. And that's and how mine was supported. Yeah, so through SEEK, right, I had the, the, from that program, um, I had a guidance counselor, which I'll talk to you about. And then... Um, you know, you had the Pell Grants, and that's how mm -hmm. my undergrad was mm -hmm. basically funded. But that that person who becomes my guidance counselor is a Sikh student. Her name is, she, she didn't even have a doctorate. This was, I'm talking about, this was about mm -hmm. 22, 23 years ago. Mm -hmm. All right. Puerto Rican woman by the name of Dr. Jody Rory. Dr. Jody Rory is... Shout out to Dr. Joey Rory. Puerto Rican woman who is the godmother of Pipeline to Education mm -hmm. here in the five boroughs. I don't think she's gotten, I don't think there's a person who's gotten more kids into law school than Dr. Rory. Um, but at that point, she, she didn't have that yet. At that point, she was just my counselor. She had a PhD and a JD. And her goal was like, we need to make you a professional, right? She's like, she always said it. She's like, education is the greatest equalizer. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm still young. I don't really understand what she's saying to me. Mm -hmm. But she's like, it's the greatest equalizer, Francois. You have to do this. But I'm like, yo, I don't have the money to go get a PhD. I don't have the money to go get a master's. I don't have the money to go to law school. And who, where, like, what, how? Like, I don't even, yeah. it's a daunting process, right? Mm -hmm. it, it feels giant. Mm -hmm. and like, it could overwhelm you. And it was through her that she was like, you're going to do it. I don't care where you go, who accepts you. Just go to an accredited school and we'll figure out the rest later. And oh, that was her. Nice that was her. Let's but see the vision. She, but, she, but she's going through her own thing. She's got to finish her, her doctorate, mm -hmm. finish her dissertation and all of that. Years later, she finishes. And I'm procrastinating. I'm not like about to graduate, but I'm still working there as a, you know, as a writing tutor. And I'm like, what do I do? What do I do? I don't know what to do because I was scared to, to go out there. I was scared to graduate. Like, real talk. The real world. Yeah. And what, what do I do? But I know I definitely want to go to either law school or to grad school and get a PhD. Mm -hmm. And then I applied and she helped me out to apply. And I got rejected. I got waitlisted. And we're at the first school that took me. That's where I ended up going. And I left. And I left home. I didn't like, I filled out all the like. <laughs> He was just ready to all, go. And all the stuff on. for like, for the loan, the loan application, the notes, the promissory notes. Mm -hmm. Shout out to my cousin. My cousin was like the, the guarantor on one of those, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and that's how I ended up going into law. Going into law. And that's how I ended up in the Midwest going to law school. And I, w I had been here my whole life. And how, how was that? Because that in itself was possibly a culture shock, right? That was the Completely the different from shock. what we're accustomed to, busy cities, and now you just... And now you, you're in a small town in the Midwest. On your own. On my own. Like, now I'm, quote-unquote, mm -hmm. 
manning up here, mm -hmm. right? Because you have to your own meals, your own laundry, it, so. right? You took out this six-figure loan. Right. You can't come here and not right. finish this. Mm -hmm. And then people, people were like, "Yo, well, what's what's Plan B, Francois?" And I was like, "There isn't. There isn't Plan B. This is Plan. It's gonna work. One, two, three, four, and five. A, B, C, D. Like, like right. this is this is it. Like, this there's it. no backup. I'm putting everything into this. Mm -hmm. And I had. You've met a lot of like." my friends and, mm -hmm. and my base. And I've known those guys since I was about 10. Yeah, I'm, I'm 42. We're in the same circles. Right? So I'm 42 now. And that same group of friends that I've always had, shout out to my to, to, to my to my family. Family. Because they were very supportive exactly. too. You know, they provided whatever resources they could. It was a whole community effort. And that's what it takes. It takes a community. You know, like they had a going away party. Like, he's a stapler. He's this, here's that, here's that. Right. Like Aww. I had somebody giving me a Black's Law Dictionary. They were just beautiful. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I have my community. Right. I have they're my parents. They're rooting for you. They're rooting they're for rooting. you. I can't come back no, here you with, you can't. with an L. Like there's no, mm -hmm. there's no. There's no backup. There's no this, backup. This is, this is what it is. And you're the only person who may look the way you look, mm -hmm. who may talk the way you do. See, you don't, you and I are speaking here right now because we're from here. We don't take notice of our accents, but when you're in a room with people who are not oh, absolutely. from New York City, you stick out like a sore thumb. Absolutely. So that, my accent. And then it's a double whammy because it, we it, have it, our Latino it, accents, right? And correct. then we have our New York accents, so it's completely like, what? So who are you? All of that you? identity. So all of that like, identity. The focal you know, point in the room when you step into hey, a... Hey, your name is Francois <laughs> Restrepo, <laughs> right? And, and, and so there's, there's that experience. There is that culture shock, mm -hmm. right? There is being around folks who come from a complete different background, culturally, socially, economically. Mm -hmm. Economically as Right, well. like being around people who may be wealthy, who have mm -hmm. never been on... Anything. TV, like I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know you could be that wealthy and not on TV. Like mm -hmm, all of these things that mm -hmm. I was just like, wow, um, culture shock. But you know, and it's traditional law schools. You know, very Darwinian, mm -hmm. think or swim, um, sort of experience there. And I had to learn how to swim. Right. <laughs> and right. that, and that's what I'm going to touch upon next. So, um, teachable moments or different traumas, twists and turns, hiccups that you had to navigate through in order to be where you are today. Yeah. I, it, I mean, it so, happens to everyone in every so I mean, walk of life. Where do we start? Um, let me see. That could have phased you and you just navigated that, through it. The amount of pressure. Mm -hmm. The amount of pressure from law school. Um the rat race, how fast, how mm -hmm. you know, and the amount of work that that's expected of you, because you're learning how to think, speak, and almost contain yourself, right? Because we come from such a busy place where it calls your attention. Your attention is everywhere at the same time, and you're now trying to navigate into a profession that you have to completely refocus because lives. Correct. Correct. Lay at your hands. Correct. Pretty much. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and so you have to be disciplined. Mm -hmm. So you have to be disciplined. And you now have all this responsibility on you, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you have this student mm -hmm. loan money, right? Mm -hmm. But that's what you have to pay your bills with. That's not what you are going out to exactly. shop with. You have to feed yourself with that. And then you have to pay that money back mm -hmm. one day, right? So all that to say, all that to say that... I, I think the pressures that come out of going there and then, you know, passing the bar, all of that. And then you're, there's a lot of pressure that I just never knew existed. Mm -hmm. And I think it wasn't until somebody very close to me said, and it was, it was my mom, actually. My mom said, I want you to like, think about where we come from and your journey here and look where you're at. So look what we escaped and how dangerous mm -hmm. that was. And look where you're here now. You almost have a privilege that your biggest problem right now is that you're about to take this bar exam, mm -hmm. right? Or that you have to take another exam to finish law school. Right. And that's your biggest problem. But if these things didn't phase you, then why are you giving this so, so much weight like mm -hmm. that Energy. of life or death? You're not going to burn if 
you don't pass that bar exam. You mm-hmm. get to actually live another day and you retake it. Mm-hmm. And when she contextualized that and, and, and sort of put like this she balanced balance out being, the, st- the scales for you. Right? I was just like, uh-huh. Yeah, like this is this is your biggest goal right now and you live you live another day. I live another day. You live another and day. And I made it out of NYC during the nineties. School and mm-hmm. you know during the during the eighties I made it out of NYC during the nineties and, and and going to school here and, and and all of that stuff like you know like you know how I that know. was so <laughs> you know. so so you get out of that and then you leave a worn torn place and you're like mm-hmm. it's almost that guilty that I'm like I'm really complaining that this is like really my next issue given that but that contextualized everything for me and that mm-hmm. fueled me and I get out of school 2010 and you're in you know you're in a recession and there's no mm-hmm. jobs you know and luckily there was this opening to help run a pipeline to law school program with now Dr. Professor Jody Rory full circle full circle full circle and she just called me up and I was like yeah let's do it mm-hmm. um and we did that and through there in, in the Latin American Studies department that's how I ended up teaching and that's how I made you know connections with other professors and they're like hey I'm writing this book Exactly. Write this piece, co author this so article with me. A teacher, and it's always full circle. Full circle, full circle. but it was through that. Mm-hmm. And then, right, there's like no jobs. And then I was like, but I'm not really like in a rush here to like mm-hmm. pass this bar exam to go do document, document review somewhere or, or whatever. Mm-hmm. But then I, you know, I took it, pass it. Um, and then in around 2015, that's when I actually start practicing. Mm-hmm. law but then there's things happening in my personal life too right after like I start practicing law as a housing attorney in my personal life there's things that are happening or that happened that compelled me to do some very serious inventory mm-hmm. right because my professional life and my traject you know is, is moving the way mm-hmm. that I wanted to move um but my personal life too especially as a as a as a heterosexual man, right? There's so much that we're not taught mm-hmm. about how to handle certain personal problems. Would that would that be how to handle intergenerational, you know, trauma? Um, how to handle toxicity in relationships, in intimate relationships? Because a lot of the times, um, these conversations that are norms to other people with our, within the Black and Latino community, sometimes these conversations are not had. And we'll get into something else a little bit later on. But um, these conversations should happen. These these personal conversations, generational conversations that sometimes stay undercover and they should be brought forth so that you know how to navigate certain situations in life. But continue, I'm sorry. You've seen, you've seen in Encanto? Mm-hmm. We don't talk about Bruno? No. It's Colombian, mm-hmm. right? But I'm sure that many folks from the black African-American community and Latino and community Latino, and Latino can communities. both relate. I'm Colombian, and that film, you know, is is, a, is about a, a Colombian family. But when I, you know, when they start, we don't talk about Bruno, mm-hmm. I was like, yo, that's right. That's real. No, it is. That's, it's that, true. That, that, it's that, true. We just that's real. push forward. We don't talk about that. Um, when I was doing ge- a genealogy project, I had the same kind of pushback from my father asking him questions about our heritage and so I hit a brick wall because it was just limited information where where I was searching for other information I was able to just progress but there are certain things that are not discussed and then it's a disservice it It it, it's a disservice it's a disservice and and the 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 impact that generational trauma has right is that it spills over it could mm-hmm. spill over into your job. Mm-hmm. It could spill over into mm-hmm. your relationship with your friends, your significant others, exactly. right? So, I had I had an issue, and and my good friend told me, "Um, I need you to get into therapy right now," mm-hmm. and I did, mm-hmm. and it was what was in twenty twenty three. I started doing therapy in 2016. Mm-hmm. I started doing therapy. 
I still go to the same therapist and I go to a woman, Puerto Rican woman. And because I was like, I need somebody who's going to no, call and, me and, out. And that's a section that we do talk about. And I'm going to, I'm going to just push it forward with you. So therapy, therapy, it is, it is important. It is important in our community. Sometimes it's fraud upon mental health is absolutely important. Balancing our mental and our physical tie in together. They work in unison. If one is not working, the other is, it, you're, you're restricting yourself by not caring for your mental. In a society that we're told to continuously push forward, right? And just keep going. Correct. So congratulations to you for taking that Thank step you. and for whoever spoke to you about seeking therapy because it is important. Even if it's frowned upon which it should not be, and we need to break that stigma because therapy is important. It was, yeah. MMG, shout out to MMG. She she was like, I need you to get into therapy like ASAP. Mm -hmm. And I did. And um, you know, what I do for a living has a lot of vicarious trauma with it, and we could talk about mm -hmm. that later. Mm -hmm. But how to at that point, I'm 42 now, so we go back to 2016, about 35, 36. You have to note that. At that point, you're peeling back. Now you're, you're, you're trying to peel back 36 years of the onion, mm -hmm. so to say, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. As opposed to like mm -hmm. 20 or 18, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And as we keep... And we walk with trauma. We walk, we walk, just... We're walking trauma, and sometimes we just don't address it. And sometimes we may respond to certain things where you go, where, where does that come from? Your projection. And it's learned, projected behavior. Correct. Correct. So, um, I am... Um, I think is the most important thing I did it that I have right now as a tool for self care. Yeah. I was watching the episode you had on here with Pete Rock and he was talking about therapy. Therapy as and well. We have to be transparent. And, and, and this being... is this is this is important that <clears throat> we see other people that look like us taking the steps to betterment, to better ourselves mentally, emotionally, physically, because it's all tied in together. Correct. Um Agree, and I think that doing therapy is one of the best things that you can do for your mental health, and I promise you it'll make you a better, you know, brother, human. father, human, <laughs> human being, being. Human like, just being for this all around. that we're all in together, right? It'll make you just, because there's a lot. You, you are not expected to walk around with everything that you've bottled up from your you. experience to the time and just, keep going. you know, keep, keep, going. keep it inside. And nothing's supposed to happen it's with a it. Service to yourself, if you um, but that's what really changed my life. Really, mm -hmm. to be honest with you, it was heading into therapy, being honest in that room with myself, with my therapist, um, about the things I was dealing with in my personal life, mm -hmm. in my professional life too. Like how you know how mm -hmm. to maneuver, right? Because it's a balancing act, right? Correct. You have to be able to balance both. You have to survive in this world, right? But your emotional ties to whatever or situations can weigh you and Correct. you take whatever's inside outside and then you're dealing with the world Correct. and sometimes the responses you know that may come from here that don't deserve to be out there correct i mean they don't translate they, they don't well translate, sometimes right? <laughs> things get lost in translation you know? like that's not what i meant to say right, that's not the thing. Right. we're talking about in intent versus impact mm -hmm. right um where, where's, where's the thing i, I talk about that with my wife all the time mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, you know i'm like i'm not it's, it's a pet peeve of mine when people's like you know I, it wasn't my intention mm -hmm. to do but i was like i know but we could talk about the impact intention mm -hmm. is one thing and we can get into that but... i had a mentor that once told me um and i still live by this that i don't know he goes you shouldn't say i don't know because there's a reason behind everything you may have to double back and think about it but there's a reason for everything that you do Correct. So I sit with that, and sometimes I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, no, 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 okay, let me think. <laughs> but but going because to your I, point, I, I think there's a lot of stigma, and I think there's a lot of stigma to do therapy, especially if you're a man, and especially if you're a man who belongs to a certain demographic, like mm -hmm. that's that stigma is augmented a bit more or just a bit sharper. So people try to stray away from it, and then you'll see people trying to cope in exactly. other ways that other may not be, to be able to, to navigate you know yeah. healthy i think that therapy is one aspect of self-care i think that you also have to like 
move mm -hmm. because and I, and I mean like exercise right, and being right. mobile not just for the sake of shedding a calorie or two mm -hmm. stress has a way of parking itself Physically. in a part of your body you know you ever you ever speak to somebody or you yourself may have this experience where you'll go to the doctor and they'll run every test they can on you right. but like i still don't know what's wrong with you mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm sorry and you're like i still don't know what's wrong with me after i've done all of this you've given me medication for x but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right and we think about what stress does and how it it will manifest it manifest will in manifest your in, in, in your body, body into something else so i'm like how do we sweat that out mm -hmm. how do we get that out so for me it's a combination of therapy the physical the physical right and then you're very nice by the way because you said you said a producer no i'm just I'm, no, 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 no 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 i'm not in your in your own right you are making art and you also asked me so let's take it back you asked yeah. me millie how do i fit into this program and i said one our <laughs> friendship right two we're tied through hip-hop you said that to me when at the landmark exactly. when you saw me and I was, I was blown away by that but you're like remember what connected us just that hip hop it was a culture art yeah at community culture and it's just these are roots and then this is a platform for students for people for students of any age that want to go into whatever career we're discussing that look like you and I and let them know that this is possible and here are the tools and here are the resources that you can take and navigate yourself you can tweak it however you want but this is the blueprint that worked for me maybe you can take bits and pieces and it'll work for you one thing to that when you said being in this profession with folks that look like me that look like us i've been very fortunate to have judges um who come from diverse backgrounds who they're like come on get on the bench we gonna do these arraignments and I'm gonna show you what these are like. I'm gonna invite you to my courtroom and I'm gonna show you what this is like. Um, you know, I, I had a transition from academia into legal practice, right? Into mm -hmm. the, the practice of law. I had, a, you know, another mentor, um, Puerto Rican attorney. He took me on as a volunteer attorney uh, where he works at and that changed me too. It gave me, you know, more opportunity in a different area of the law, but he looked like me. He came from exactly. my, you know, a similar background. Um, and he was like, this is important for me to do because there's not exactly. enough. And, and my thing with, with anyone who I've mentored, anyone who I've ever helped get into law school, who's like, how can I thank you? How can I thank you? I'm like, you pay it forward. forward. You pay, pay it, it forward. forward. You get the next person. The next person that comes to you and says, I have help. I, I need help. I'm trying to get either into college or into a grad program or into law school. Mm -hmm. That's who you help. Like you help navigate you the next to, person you into have higher to be education. Able to share, share those tools. You know, um, what didn't work for you? Um, share that. What worked for you? And then they're able to see, okay, there's these different tools that I can utilize. This person looks like me. And not necessarily, you know, it has to be a toolbox that looks, you know, everyone looks the same or looks like you. But there are possibilities and there are resources and there are these different things. And Correct. there are mentors that have guided us through these things. Now, pushing forward. So as a student, a teacher of law, musician in your own right, right? You're fine. All, all, in your own right? My crew, I could see them. They're like, he is so gassed up right now trust me i just have a little hobby i have a little hobby i have a little hobby at home it's not a hobby it's it's something that you put love and interest into and that is thank you that's art thank you art is subjective art is objective art is whatever you want it to it be is. so um three things that you would want to share with other students be it music law books something that you read something that you feel is important that they should gravitate towards to mm. help them push forward mm. got you three things that are in your toolbox that are a must three things that are in my toolbox for any student of anything if of you're anything. if you're interested in taking your craft or, in, or into developing a craft or into getting into a certain field don't be afraid of reaching out and asking questions don't be afraid of saying hey do you need a volunteer do you need an intern mm -hmm. there um that's number one speak out you'd be surprised how many people don't speak out exactly. um 
that's one. We're talking about our interpreters out there. So language is not a barrier. You're going to find someone that can speak your language and be able to communicate what you're trying to say. Correct. Don't be afraid to connect. Don't be afraid. I, I didn't I didn't know how to network. I really didn't. I didn't know what that looked like. I, mm -hmm. I thought when we spoke of networks, we were talking about computer <laughs> networks. <laughs> right. All right. And and my homie who, who, who does computer networking, my, my friend G. But I, I thought that was it. I didn't understand what that's like. And that's similar to what we're doing now, but in another space. Mm -hmm. Right. Hi, how are you doing? What is it? You do? Oh, my God. I have an interest in that or not. It's tough, but you have to like break through that right. sort of barrier and that if you're comfortable exactly. where you're at you have to step out you have to step out zone. that's number one mm -hmm. hey, we're gonna get into books anything by the late great james baldwin james baldwin yes james baldwin mm -hmm. james baldwin um just is the ultimate resource Correct. For poetry, and for living, for community, for for the spirit, for, for the spirit, for everything. activism, for we can keep going. We but keep his going. his control of the English language, mm -hmm. that's what I think I admire the most. Mm -hmm. The way he mastered the English language, um, <clears throat> and music. Music. I would say. Um, music, 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 music where do we start it can be producers it can be um a, a, mm. a particular album that spoke to you that you feel that others should know about it can be Puff McDaniels. it could be anything you, you know what i i'm big into jazz mm -hmm. um as well as break beats and a lot of like that obscure disco from around the world um Unfortunately, you know, many parts of the world are unstabilized or destabilized for whatever reason or, or just going through turmoil. But you'll see that like music that comes out of certain places during the 60s or the 70s that were, they, you know, Brazil went through a, a dictatorship period. Mm -hmm. The music that comes out of that period, phenomenal, right? Ethiopia too, a lot of turmoil, right? 60s and 70s. Mm -hmm. The music that comes out of there, you're like, Wow. I think right. any music that comes from an oppressed state. Anywhere. Just you're like because wow. because you have so much to say and if you don't have the possibility to say it, you can use music as your tool to Correct. But you know, like I, I'm talking to you about like all this music that I'm into, like you know, different genres from different eras and, and really the way I got introduced to all that stuff was through hip hop, right? Because then you look up pulls from every oh where, where he, he sampled what mm -hmm. he sampled if you when you used to get an album actually mm -hmm. actually open up the credits if they actually had to like put you know <laughs> right. sample clearance stuff <laughs> you're clearance. like oh millie millie got it from that what mm -hmm. is that and then you mm -hmm. put that on you're like this is donald bird mm -hmm. who Yo, i didn't i didn't know about samandi i didn't know about bob james and like now it's so much easier right they could just shazam all right so you shazam you, so it you don't even have to do the work <laughs> You Google it, you Google it. You could just say, yo, what samples are on this album by whomever and it'll all come up, mm -hmm. right? Um, but it's that, it's, 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 never stop being curious. Yeah. Never stop being curious. You know? And so now the next question, what are you looking forward to learning more about as a student of life? It can be anything. I have a daughter. Mm -hmm. Shout out to my wife. And a banana into my heart, Leilani. I think um, parenting, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> I am learning as I'm speaking to you. She's a year and a half old. Like I'm, I'm learning how to be a parent and adjusting, adjusting to being a parent and my job, being a parent mm -hmm. and a husband too, and a partner, right? Like, like balancing all of that out like i'm still and it's going to be an ever-changing experience as correct she grows and, and, and you grow together because this will be the youngest you ever be yeah you know so you're growing together facts so facts so i think it's in, in my personal life is that um knowing that i uh, there isn't a manual for this mm -hmm. i can't 
do some legal research on this mm-hmm. to, to show me what's the best way to put her down for yeah, nap time a, right it's now. A, it's a growing experience and it's an ever changing experience because she's gone. So that in my personal life, right? Like, um, in terms of like learning how to parent, how to parent, um, and how to how to be a good father and how to how to sort of manage this balance that I I need to have in my household on a professional level. There's other areas of the, of the law that I want to explore and explore. you know and, and get good at as well, um, and then from from um, you know on another level I I you know having time to like learn another language another right language. perhaps Arabic perhaps Mandarin um, if I could learn another language right and it's all about just making time because we're ever learning. Um, constantly learning things are constantly changing around us and we have no choice but to learn different things so even if we're not willingly participating we are participating because we have to learn but it's always good to just focus in and key on key in on something that you that's you're passionate about i I think it's important to to like you know you're you're in academia as well you're you're a teacher you have students i think leaving yourself room to grow and just know that like you are not an absolute today and you're not you know like like the the person that you are today is not going to be the person who you are in absolute form mm-hmm. no. 10 20 years from now so Absolutely. the way that i viewed the world a certain way 20 years ago is not the way that I, right the way i view parenting mm-hmm. I, because you have to continuously right. adapt to everything that's changing around you because if not you're going to be a disservice Correct. So if you're not a service to the situation, you're a disservice. So you have to grow with the situation. Every time I walk into a room, you know, you have to assess what what's the day going to look like? How is little Bobby or Johnny or Maria Correct. feeling, right? So that I gauge in on how they're feeling so that I can be a better service to them. Correct. Correct. And then once you're out of the room, then you have to take care of yourself <laughs> Correct. as well, right? No, correct. You have to find ways to decompress and, and take care of yourself. Um Anything that you want to share outside of what we just discussed for a student of law, um, a key chunk, something that you feel that they mm. should I really look, keep in their heart or, or a little token of this little nugget, take this with you because I think it's important. I've been fortunate. I've been very fortunate because I've I've had different mentors in my life leave yourself open right to to adapt to, to adapt to let somebody situation. teach you yeah, right something. um especially as you as, as as you you get older you may dig in your well, heels you set, a bit right? right you may be setting your ways a mm-hmm. bit right so if millie's trying to put me on to do things differently mm-hmm. um leave yourself open leave yourself open to opportunity and to learning mm-hmm. like be mindful you know if it doesn't feel good and your, your gut but if there's an opportunity that you can see okay i can plug right by and, this. and mentorship is important and not all mentors mm-hmm. ships are going to work it's out not, you this person not, may not be, not be a fit for you. may not be a good fit for you right like work just like working somewhere may not mm-hmm. just like going mm-hmm. to a certain dentist that that may not be where you want to you know mm-hmm. be treated at it's the same thing with mentorship i have i just happen to have been very fortunate, fortunate. To have come across all these mentors, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Latinos, Latinas who took the time to really invest in my development, and I've been very fortunate for that. But I made sure that I was open to be taught. Mm-hmm. That exactly. that was key. Exactly. That was without that, I'm not here talking to you. We be able to just open up and, and, and listen, listen. Keep your ears open and you may learn something. No, you're going to learn something. It's just you about, it, the may is if you don't want to, but you will learn. Um, So let's switch it. Let's switch gears a little. Let's do it. We're going to take a lunch break. So what, we're going to plug our favorite places, brick and mortars, places that we love, that we want to continue to show some love to and support. I'm going to get started while you dig for your notes. Um, Swerve, I don't know if you have anywhere today. So I had the experience of going to Kiasco 787 in Park Slope. 
this past Friday. It's located at 488 Carroll Street, Brooklyn, New York. You it's went to Park the Slope. slums of yeah. Park Slope. <laughs> Park you Slope. made it back safe. I made it safe. This is uh, another gentrified neighborhood, mm -hmm. just like my neighborhood. So it's um the owner in conversation. His name is Al. Shout out to Al. Um, so he is PH's childhood friend, Pumpkinhead, which was a good friend of mine. May he rest in peace. Rest in peace. Um, so we got to talking, made connections. He knows we have mutual friends, not mm -hmm. a small world at all. Um, so great service, great food, great acapurrias, Caribbean food. Go check out Kiasco, 787, 488 Carroll Street, Brooklyn, New York, Park Slope. All right. I, I'll see you. <laughs> on that right um so first and foremost i spoke to you about how i've always had a village behind me mm -hmm. right like a whole, whole right, people behind right. me like the verizon man right like all those people in the in the commercial behind him. um my friend carlos castillo got some partners and they have carlitos tacos the best brisket tacos out here in the east coast is this the one that frank frank is always going to yes and he's shout always posting frank. them shout out to shout safe out to um <laughs> So yes, he's always posting them. Um, he's like, man, these tacos are amazing. They you are. Have to try them. They are. I have. I have. Listen, he's like, the homie owns the truck. <laughs> listen, my my so. my. I I told one of my friends at 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 work about about him, Lenina. She was just like, "You've been stashing. You have like a taco <laughs> connecting. You've been stashing." So yes, um, Carlitos Tacos. They do have a spot out here at the Smorgasburg when they do it. Um. When the weather gets nicer out here by um the world trade one world trade um they have i think a spot at the airport i think newark airport and they're trying to expand with, with a with a restaurant but he does a lot of catering events for like the likes of the giants the new york giants and stuff like that um but shout out to him this is my childhood friend from an immigrant background from Honduras. Say the, say the name again and where we can we contact him. Even if it's at, just at the food truck and you can start a conversation there. Food truck there. Uh Carlos Castillo is his name. His uh his um handle on Instagram is at Carlitos Tacos or at uh Carlos Castillo. Um and they have a truck. They operate in New Jersey, they operate out here in Manhattan, um, and they're trying to expand best brisket tacos, but that's like childhood friend like. Mm -hmm. So that's one. Um I have another one. May I share another Go one with you? Ahead. So I spoke to you about Dr. Jody Rory, right? Mm -hmm. So she has her divert the Rory Diversity Pipeline Alliance, which is her nonprofit um, that she has, and she uses that to basically help kids from the inner city out here in New York City mm -hmm. um, get into law school. So shout out to her. Shout I'm talking. She is Thank you for the great phenomenal, work. and she great does a lot of work. she does a lot of work in Puerto Rico, like around you know relief efforts. Let's say Hurricane Maria, mm -hmm. um, violence against women. Um, she does a lot of work around that in Puerto Rico as well. So she's back and forth between here and trying to help the next generation of Black and Latino attorneys. Thank you for servicing the community, and we need people like that. Correct. Correct. Like this. Swear, you have anybody? No, not today. No. Okay, so we're gonna get into our pop quiz. So Oh one uh, more, one more. Just real quick. Go one. Ahead. Upper West Side Skates. Upper West Side Skates. Chris, you know you know you know the brother of um Chris. He's got a <clears throat> skateboard shop, mom and pop shop. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry about that. Um yeah. Latino owned on the Upper West Side. Um, shout out to him. And that that's it. Awesome, awesome. So we do love to champion our brick and mortars, our friends, just to show them some love in our ever-changing New York. We want to keep a lot of these staples here and up-and-coming businesses, you know? So our pop quiz. So Let's here go. we go. Let's go. So there is a prize for every question that you answer correctly. If not, then there's some funny money. Funny money. Or a lump of coal. Or some fake money. But um, I'm sure that you will answer these questions correct. I may not. Yeah. You give me a lot of credit. We, we, we got this. I we may got not. This. We got this. I will support you along the way. I may not. Go ahead. So here we go. The first question yeah. is, this is a rap group that began to sizzle in the, on the hip-hop scene in 1985 for their political messaging that highlighted racism in America, injustice, and promoting the ability to voice your rights. 
by standing up for the people against the status quo. Their first album was released in 1987 entitled Yo Bum Rush the Show. One of the group members literally lets you know what time it is. They are known for fighting the power. What is the name of this group and or group members? Shout out to Long Island, Strong Island, Public Enemy, Chuck D. Public Master Enemy of number one. <laughs> Master of Ceremony. Yes, correct. So here's your first prize. You can show it to the camera. So um, just to let you know, the prizes were almost curated by safe <laughs> wow so, safe yeah thank you so thank you, Frank. he has okay um like what Curated we get into Frank. so we have thanks spidey <laughs> thank you spidey thank you. um the next question is this film is a timeless masterpiece and ever relevant today the film was released in the summer of 1989 featuring the song fight the power as its core theme wow. the story takes place in best Buy, brooklyn during an intense heat wave the film focuses on racism economic exploitation police brutality economic inequality multiculturalism and numerous other topics the young filmmaker slash lead actor introduced us to many rising stars and already established film giants some of the folks that were part of the cast are ruby d Ozzy Davis, Danny Aiello, Samuel L. Jackson, Rosie Perez, John Turturro, John Carlos Esposito, Bill Nunn, and many more. What is the name of this film? John Carlos Esposito gets his Jordan stepped on. We're talking about <laughs> Brooklyn. We're talking about do the right thing. Do the right thing. There you go. There you go. Well, you accepted prize. Congratulations. So this is for the culture. Wow. <laughs> this is for the culture. <laughs> Thank you so much. So we have I appreciate Spidey you. and Miles. Boom. Spidey and Miles. Spidey and Miles. Spidey and Miles. So our third and final question. This man was a civil rights lawyer and the first black African-American appointed to the Supreme Court. This man used the courts to fight Jim Crow laws and dismantle segregation in the U.S. My man Thurgood. <laughs> and Thurgood Marshall, he I sent won, you that picture. He won numerous cases over injustice in establishing presidents for chipping away the Jim Crow laws. Also, in higher education, he then succeeded in having the Supreme Court declare segregation in public schools unconstitutional in the Brown versus, Brown versus the Board of Education mm -hmm. 1954 case. Brown versus Board of Education was a landmark case. Who was this man, which you already said? Thurgood Marshall. I sent you one of the pictures of me standing right, right in front of the Thurgood Marshall so courthouse. So you won your third prize. Look at it. I killed it. So it was a two-part prize. We can Frank. Show the camera as well. This is all Frank. This is all Frank. Yes. Wow. Look at that. X-Men. So he said you were X-Men. I X -Men do. X-Men fan and a Spider-Man fan. So... There Shout out to We're Frank. taking it back to your childhood. That's why you have brown Thank bags. You. Thank and, you. And so a child would be excited. An adult would be excited about receiving Spidey and X-Men. So um, let's continue moving on. He gave my daughter a laminated R.J. Barrett rookie card. Aww. That's what that's what Frank <laughs> gave my daughter when she was born. And I still have it. We love you, Frank. Um, so... What are your social media handles or any website or anywhere that people can contact you that you feel comfortable with people contacting you if they have any questions? Well, just uh, Instagram, Fresh, tr Fresh Trepo, uh, Fresh as in F-R-E-S-H and uh, T-R-E-P-O, uh, Fresh Trepo. That's where you can contact me if you have any questions about the legal profession, higher education, academia, any of that stuff. We can always chat it up. Thank you for sharing that. And so this is a moment of reflection or dedication to someone that whether um, they may be here, may not be here, that you want to just show some love to them because they helped and guided you along the way. The list is long. Uh, I'll keep it short. Obviously, you know, I'm always thinking about my grandparents. Mm -hmm. um, I'm always thinking about not only folks who who are not here, but the folks who who are here, mm -hmm. like my mentors who I've shouted out, my friends. Um, but where I'm at, 
today, right? It, you know, like I'm very fortunate. Mm -hmm. it, to me, it's the biggest flex to still have the mentors that I have, the childhood friends who are still my mm -hmm. my same friends, my still my my base. Um, they may not know this, and you know, but they are a big part of me, and mm -hmm. I love them as well as my parents, my siblings, um, my wife. Yeah. and my baby yeah, like yeah. that's where my heart is at mm -hmm. so i we're gonna shout out anybody you know my yeah. wife and my little girl okay. first and foremost and the, and everyone you know, along that list that you mentioned along exactly. along that list because it's it's get i, I hate this it's myth about like kind of love but it, it, it's still love and it's your community and it's your tribe right because the, the self-made thing is a, no, is a myth it, like a myth. and i'm like unless, i have unless you all really these folks have it like that me. i mean and not even because everyone had some sort of guidance, whether they want to admit it or not, um, or someone that helped guide them along the Correct. way. Correct. Um, so I believe in living flowers as opposed to eulogies. Eulogies are for the people that are left behind, right? That are mourning. So we're living. Yeah. So if you were to walk into a room, mm. right? Any room that you want it to be, it can be workplace, it can be at home, it can be wherever, wherever you want to place yourself. And whatever particular group of people that you want there, okay, so you're envisioning that, what would you like to hear about yourself in terms of how you influenced or mentored or guided or what would you like that conversation to sound like? I, look, if I got to make things better for one person, just for one person, mm -hmm. I'm okay. Okay. And if you if you can tell tell me about that, that'd be great. But if also if you want to hold me accountable, yeah. that's honest for something. That's honest. You know because we're not perfect. We're not, and you help me, mm -hmm. right? Um, to improve wherever I need to improve. Mm -hmm. So anyone that's in there, like anyone who, if I've affected your life in the positive even if it's one person but if there's things that i could have done better let's talk about it right all right that's yeah. honest thank you for sharing that next if you can write a letter to hip-hop utilizing just one sentence one short sentence Ugh. what would you tell hip-hop i'm so confused right now <laughs> That's what I would in tell. In terms of what, what's happening with it. Perfectly. Yeah, I just don't know. Like, like sonically, like sonically, I, I, I have. First of all, I don't hate on whomever. Like, you know, you no, there, new kids. Is, like, no, there is amazing hip hop. Yeah, out there. What's happening commercially? It, it, it's it's difficult. It's just it's it, difficult, it, it, and we need to be able to bring it back to studying the roots of hip hop, yeah, and progressing from there because we come from the golden era, right? Yes, and we've seen most of us seen the birth of hip hop until when it progressed to people like Rakim and then moving forward down the line, right? And the various groups that came from hip hop, the different multicultural levels of hip hop. Um, and we're, we're, we're regressing in terms of bars, in terms of context, in terms of beats matching the music and working in cohesion. And I think that's probably what you're getting at. Yeah. Like sonically, I'm just, I'm just a little confused mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and, um, but you know, I know that things change and things evolve. Um, and, and I don't hate on whomever. I just, for me, we just want more. And I know you can give us more. Yeah. The vocabulary is there. The music is there. The producers are there. The dictionary is there. <laughs> so right. make it work. Put, um, in, put in the work and it, it make it work. So, you know, some of it, some of it is cool and catchy, but at, you know what it is too? I, I try my best at 42 to like, not be that person who's, who's like hating on all, kids. I think we're all trying. I think we're you all know? trying. And. A lot of the artists that are saying a lot and are putting things into context and are speaking about all the different topics that are relevant right now are not 
for the most part, getting the microphone and the ability to be able to do so because they remain on the ground. And we have to be able to shift that and give them the opportunity to give us their music. You, you and I see each other a lot at certain events, but we see each other a lot at live music spots mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. um, and that's one of the things I, I, I will say, keep supporting live music. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people who are performing out there. And that's that's the exposure that that's the exposure, need. support, 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 support. support if the there's music. if there's dope artists, um, whether they're new or old, if it's dope, support live music. And even if they remain on the ground, let's go support them and be able to to help them help their families. Right. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's the, the key, the community, um, and working together to to uplift. Anyone you want to give extra credit, love, shout out to? My wife and my daughter. Wife and daughter. Okay. So any <laughs> closing words on this platform, anyone else that you want to mention before we close out? No, I want, well, look, thank you for having me here. And no, thank you for being here because time is important. And thank we're you. here on a Sunday and it's family time. And I know how important and valuable time is because it's one of most one of our most valuable assets. And you shared that here with us and for others to have this toolbox to work from. Thank you. And I hope that however this can help. And it will. Whomever. It will. It will. Um, I, I hope it does. Um, shout out yeah, to you for having me on here and for what you're doing with this show. And like I said, I I I always go back to community like community the, is, from is my key. parents from my my friends from the mentors that i have in my life um i'm i'm a very fortunate person mm -hmm. to be here talking mm -hmm. to you right now at the age of 42 as an attorney in new york city mm -hmm. as a father as a son as a friend i'm just very fortunate and i wake up every day and i thank the heavens for the fact that i wake up right this beautiful blessing and i'm being a blessing to others um so Mr. Francois Restrepo, we have finally completed the lesson plan. How do you feel, my brother? I feel great. Thank you. Thank you for being here and thank you for your time. And we appreciate you. He has completed the lesson plan. Shout out to Corona 11368. My name is Francois Restrepo and I have just completed the lesson plan. I want to give a special shout out to Milky Mills and DWI who is not a walking, driving infraction. And I would like to give a special shout out uh, to Party 101.9, DSN, and iHeartRadio for making this possible. Peace and love.